Uh, let's start class. Okay, please start with number one, group one. For number one, bank borrowings are generally considered to be financing activities. It is true because it was stated in the book that uh, the definition of bank borrowings are it's considered to be financing activities and do not form part of cash and cash equivalents. Okay, so that's correct. Bank borrowings, bank loans are not part of your, are classified as financing. You use the money you get from the bank to finance the activities or the operations of your business. So let's have number three. The cash flow includes movements between items that constitute cash or cash equivalents because these components are part of its operating, investing, and financing activities. That our answer, sir, is false. It should be excluded, not included. Okay. And I hope that makes sense to everyone, class. If we're talking about items that is that forms part of your cash and cash equivalent, movements within that group should not be considered an outflow or an inflow. It makes sense. It's not an outflow because it does not go outside of the group. It remains within your group, which, which we call as your cash and cash equivalents. If there's a movement to another part of your cash and cash equivalent, that would still not be an inflow because, again, it is already part of the group. It's not going out. It's not going in because it's already part of the group. I hope that makes sense to everyone, class. When uh, we talk about outflows and inflows, it must result into another asset. It must result in another liability. Number five. A single transaction may include cash flows that are classified differently. True, sir. Um, this is the case in particular with interest paid from borrowing, sir. Okay. So it's possible that a single cash flow may result in multiple may result in multiple classification. <clears throat> the one mentioned by your classmate involves a scenario in which there are alternative treatments. But for number five class, the scenario contemplated here is that a single transaction results in more than one classification. So for example, modifying the example given by your classmate, when you make payments to the bank, you borrowed money from the bank, and then when you make payments, your payments will come in two forms, man. You pay for the principal and you pay for the interest. Payment for the principal will be considered as a cash flow from? Financing. Financing. While the payment for the interest may either be considered as operating or financing as well. So it's possible that a single cash payment will have two classifications. Uh, number seven, cash flows from operating activities generally result from the transactions and other events that enter into the determination of profit or loss. This is true, sir. Okay. And this is very important, class. If you have watched the videos already, class, as what I have mentioned there, if you cannot classify it as an investing or financing activity, then it should be classified as operating. Because normally, if it does not affect investing or financing activities, it would affect the determination of your profit or loss. Items that affect the determination of your profit or loss will be considered as an operating activity. Again, we, we consider your operating activity as a dumping ground. If it's not financing, if it's not investing, we dump it into your operating activities. Because normally it will have an effect on your profit or loss. Number nine, please. The cash flows of a foreign subsidiary shall be translated at the exchange rates between the functional currency by applying to the foreign currency amount and foreign currency at the end of the reporting period. The answer is false. Why? It should be at the end of the cash flows, uh, at the date of the cash flows. That's correct. It should be at the date of cash flows class. And this is what makes translation challenging class. When do we normally translate or convert our financial statements class? On the date in which we are preparing our financial statements. When do we normally prepare our financial statements? At the end of the year. And th that's what makes translation challenging. We do it at the end of the year, but we will have to use the exchange rates 
on the date in which the transaction happened. If it happened on January, you use the exchange rates on January. If it happened in September, you use the exchange rates on September. And that can be difficult because what if you did not monitor the exchange rates on, the, on those days? You will have a difficulty determining the exchange rates. Because the rule is you use the exchange rates on the date of the cash flow or on the date of the transaction, not end of the reporting period. 11, sir. Dividends paid can be classified alternative, alternatively as financing and operating cash flows. True, sir. Because I hope the explanation in the video I have shared class explains fully the alternative treatments for interest and dividends. Let's have number 13. The aggregate cash flow arising from obtaining or losing control of subsidiaries or other businesses shall be presented separately and classified as operating activities. False, sir, because, because it should be classified as investing activities. Class, you obtain a subsidiary class if you invest in the shares of another company. So transactions involving your subsidiary would be considered as an investing activity. When you acquire a subsidiary class, if you are the acquirer, if you are the parent, your investment in the subsidiary is reported in your asset section as investment in subsidiaries. So definitely such activity, such transaction relates to investing activities. Number 15. Investing and financing transactions that do not require the use of cash or cash equivalents shall be excluded from a statement of cash flows. True, sir. Okay, so basically your statement of cash flows would involve only those that are either a cash inflow or a cash outflow. But please take note, Lasa, that the standard still requires you to make important disclosures involving non-cash transactions. But if it is not going to be presented in your statement of cash flows, where do you think will it be presented, class? Non-cash transactions that are required to be disclosed in the financial statements. Where do you think it should be presented? It should be presented in the notes to the financial statements, class. If you'll recall, everything else that needs to be disclosed should be disclosed in the notes to the financial statements if it cannot be presented in the other financial statements.